Hi everybody, this is Albert. I'm a staff member at the Center for High Performance Computing, and today I'm going to be giving an introduction to some basic Linux commands. Now, as you know, Linux is primarily accessed through the terminal at the Center for High Performance Computing, and so there are a lot of things that you have to get your mind wrapped around, especially if you're used to Windows. But the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the concept of the terminal and the concept of the Linux file system and some basic things that you need to know. When you first log into a CHG system, you're presented with this perspective, which is a window. And you see here that there's this thing right here, which we call a PS1 prompt. And this tells you, at least at CHGC, who you are and where you are and what directory you're in. So your username, the host name, and then the location. Tilde means your home directory, which is the place for you as a user to do whatever you want. You can create files, get rid of files. I mean, this is within reason. You don't want to go creating, you know, so many files that you fill up the file system, but this is your place. The file system in Linux is organized as a tree. So you can imagine that there are several locations that you could have files, but all of them is contained in a place called the root directory. Now, a directory can contain files, and a directory contains can contain other directories. And so everything in Linux is organized around this concept. So the first command that I'm going to show you is not really a true command, but is more of a terminal control scheme. So Sometimes you'll be running a command. An example of this is cat, and it'll run and it won't exit out. So if I type in cat, you see that I can't do anything anymore. So the way you get out of this is by using control C, which is represented by this um, squiggle C. So if I want to terminate something running, I just type control C, and that will exit the running process if it can. Now sometimes it's something else like control D. It's usually going to be control C though. So for example, if I do Python, if I type control C, it doesn't exit immediately, but if I do control D, it will exit. So control C or control D to exit out of a program. So the question is, how do you get at your files? How do you tell where things are, what that is? Everything like that. The most basic command is ls. And if you look at this, you can see that a bunch of things are presented to me in text form. So each one of these represents either a file or a directory. Now, ls automatically colors things at CHPC. So if you have a CHPC account, you should see coloration. coloration. If you don't see that, then the way to get that is by typing ls-color equals auto. You should set this up as an alias if you are using a system that doesn't have this because it's very helpful. What do the different colors mean? Universally, blue means a directory. Green means a file that can be executed. And then pink and other colors are different files of different qualities. For example, these two right here are images that you can view. And then standard files will just be plain white, which sometimes they're text, sometimes they're not. It really depends. Extensions are not required. For example, you see here that I have a .pdf. Linux will recognize the type of file, but for organizational purposes, the file extension is useful to you as a user so that you can tell what something is. So the first question to ask is how to navigate. You can navigate using the command cd, which is change directory. So, if I type in just cd by itself, where does that take me? cd by itself takes me to my home directory. You can get there by going to cd tilde as well, and that will take you to the same place. But let's say now I want to go to my data directory. I can do that simply by typing in cd data. Now when that happens, you'll note that our prompt changes and says that instead of being in tilde, I'm in data. So if I type cd tilde, I'll go back to the previous directory. So if you want to get home real quickly, you can just type in cd tilde and that will take you there. How else can you get there though? 
so in Linux, if I type ls-a, you'll see that there's a couple of weird constructs over here. There's dot and there's dot dot. Dot is a reference to your current directory. So if I were to type cd dot slash, I'll change directly to the data directory, the same place I was before. If I ch change to cd dot dot slash, I go up a directory. Now this is the concept of a directory. The home directory, your tilde directory, contains the data directory. So when I say up a directory, that means that if I'm in the data directory, if I go up a directory, I go to the directory that contains the data directory. So let's say that you lose track of where you are. How do you tell where you are? The easy command for this is PWD, just like that. If you type that in and hit enter, it'll show you the full path of where you are. So you can see here that there's a kind of long path here, which is what you would expect to see on our clustering system. On a private system, you might see something just like home slash u0123458 in this example as your home directory. But since since CHVC has a shared cluster environment, we actually put home directories in a different place, which is under slash uufs slash chvc.utah.edu slash common slash home, and then your username. So if I switch to the data directory, and I do a pwd, you can see that it shows me where I am. So you can directly go to any path like this if you start with slash. So if I do slash uufs, chcc slash common slash home and then let's pick something different like my prog directory instead then you see that I switch there if I do pwbd it tells me that I'm there now you might have noticed that, that something funny was happening when I type in just a single character if I hit the tab key it'll do some different things for me. So you see that there are two different folders I can pick from here. But if I hit tab, it'll tell me. And then if I hit U to follow the UUFS, then it'll automatically complete that for me. So this is a very easy way of getting around quickly in Linux. Now we've talked about how to navigate. We've talked about how to find where you are. So now the question is, how do you move things around? How do you manipulate things? How do you delete things? So the easy thing about this is, is that the command is very simple. It's just mv to move a file, like so. So I'm in my prog directory, so let's see what's in here. So I have two files. I have calc underscore pi dot cpp and hello world dot c. So let's say I wanted to change the name of hello world dot c. All I'd have to do is move hello world dot c to hello dot c, for example. So the structure of this is the command followed by the source followed by the destination. And so you can change anything into anything as long as you have write permissions on the directory that you're writing to. So let's do that command and then do an ls. And you can see that I no longer have hello world.c, I have hello.c. Now let's say I wanted to move this into my home directory. All I'd have to do is do move hello.c, and then I could do tilde slash hello.c, which would cop move it up there. I could do just tilde slash by itself, or I could do dot dot slash since the parent directory for prog is also that. And all of these will work. You don't have to put the file as long as you file name as long as you're not changing the file name. But if you do want to change the file name, then you have to put a file name. So if we move it, if we do an ls, we see that there's no longer a file there for hello.c. And if I change up to my home directory and do an ls, then you see that I have hello.c. Now let's say that I don't want to move it, but I want to copy it now. So the command for copy is simply just cp, like so. <coughs> so if I wanted to copy hello back into that directory, that's really simple. All I have to do is copy hello followed by the directory. 
Now, again, you can just use the directory name, or I could do hello.c. If I wanted to, I could even do the full path name, but that's not necessary. So then if I change to prog, you see that I have it there. Now I'm going to show you a trick. If I do ls dot dot slash, then I can also see the directory above me. So the concept of picking any directory, dot dot slash, or something else, applies to many different commands, especially ls and especially cd and especially mv. And so you see that I have hello.c in both places. Now let's say I wanted to copy a directory instead of a file. When you copy a directory, you have to use a special flag called dash r. So you do cp dash r, and then let's say I wanted to copy my scripts directory. I'm not in the right directory. Say I wanted to copy it to scripts2 for some reason. You can do that, and it goes just like that. So if I do ls on scripts, and then ls on scripts2, you see that the contents are identical. What the dash r means is recursive, and for some reason the command has never been defaulted, so that cp will do a recursive copy. Maybe there's a reason that you don't want to do a recursive copy. Either way, if you want to do a copy on a directory that contains files, you have to do cp dash r. Now, if you just wanted to make a directory, then you can't simply do a copy or anything like that. You have to use a command called mkdir, or make dir. Make dir will create a file, will create a directory for you, and it's whatever you want to name it. So in this instance, I'm going to do make dir test. And if I do ls, we see that I've created a directory. Now, I'm going to remove the directory now, because I don't actually want that. And the command for removing a directory is rmdir. If I do an ls, we see that that directory is gone. Now let's say I wanted to delete something that had a directory that had files in it. For example, my docs directory. If there's files in that directory, then I can't remove it. And it tells you when that happens. In Linux, one of the things that you can count on is that if something worked correctly, it probably won't tell you an anything about whether or not it happened. But if something goes wrong, it will tell you. So, no news is good news. News is probably a bad thing, or you did something that you didn't want to do. Now, I'm not going to remove that directory because I'd like to keep it, but I am going to switch into the data directory to show you the most powerful command and the most dangerous command. So you see here that I have several files. Now if I wanted to remove one of these files, all I have to do is use rm or remove. Now I'm going to remove results 7 because I think that was a bad experiment. Now the thing about remove is that it doesn't ask you if you want to remove something. So you can see that I just removed it and that file is gone forever. There's no recycle bin, there's no second chance in Linux. If you delete something, that file is gone forever. Now, there's a permutation of the rm command which is even more powerful and even more dangerous because it will do a recursive delete. So this is rm-r, much in the same way as cp-r does a recursive. Now, rm-r is powerful because it will do a recursive delete and it may not ask you. Now, sometimes when you do a recursive delete, it will ask you if you want to delete something, but generally speaking, you can't count on it. Furthermore, there's a second flag that you can do, which is rm-rf, which will force that deletion without asking, which is a useful command, but also an extremely dangerous command. So, if you use rm-rf, absolutely make sure that you know what you're deleting and that what you expect to delete is correct. Don't delete things that are directories that have a lot of things. Don't try and delete things that aren't yours. Don't delete things that are in places that you don't understand. It can cause a lot of problems to use rm-rf if you're not cognizant of what you're actually doing. Now, on the bright side, 
unless you have write permissions, you won't be able to delete things that you don't own. So if some other user has a file that they own, they you can't delete that file, only they can delete that file. But nevertheless, if you use rm-rf, I can't stress it enough, be extremely careful when you use it. So a couple more nice little utility commands that we can use here. A nice one is clear. Clear cleans your screen off so that you can see what's going on. The command man followed by some command will show you the man pages for a file. So you can see that this tells me a lot of things about this. You can navigate this using the up and down arrow keys or the page up or page down keys. And to get out of a man page you press Q. You can do a man on almost any command. Sometimes there will be a command that you won't have a man page for and it won't tell you. For example, if I do man on QE, for example, it tells me there's no manual entry for it. But in that case, you can usually look it up on Google or somewhere else on the internet. This is the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, then you can visit us at our offices in INSCC 405 or you can send us an email at issues at chcc.utah.edu and I hope you enjoyed watching and thanks.